How's it going, guys? The Beverly Hillbilly here, and I'm here with Julie. Hi. And today we're here to kind of give our final verdict on Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain. Neither of us have beaten the game. We may never beat the game. Um, I'm hoping I just, to beat the game. One day, maybe like when we're in wa- like, like walkers. Like twenty years later. Yeah, like I've played the game for like pretty consistently like most every day for like the, since the day it came out i just hit 20 percent um do you know where you're at julie i'm probably i'm not very far in the game i actually was start off like you i was playing it like whenever i could and then i kind of just like slowly kind of started to not <laughs> <laughs> and, and there are reasons for that and that's kind of why i think it's high time to like get this like final verdict style episode in here because there's a lot to talk about this game and what we've seen from big gaming publications is not mirroring the experience that we're getting whether it be good or bad so let's get in it um metal gear solid 5 this is it the story's over which i'm okay with that I'm, i'm okay with them ending it and saying this is it here's the cutoff this is it um it doesn't drag it out forever yeah that's their choice anyways yeah. Well, I mean, I'm glad they I, don't drag it out. I mean, Hello. you know, I there's nothing else that they could do. Like they've completed the circle. So, although considering how the game is, it, it kind of does almost feel dragged out. It is a little. I mean, there is a bit of dragging out, but I think there are many reasons for that. And here is my big complaint: um, the story. Oh, um, the story. What made Metal Gear Solid so famous was it introduced these um, really high quality storylines, high quality cutscenes, even though they they seem long to some people. Um, the Metal Gear Solid One made storylines and quality in the storytelling, cutscenes, everything that made it a must. Um, yeah. It's it's not for everyone, but that's fine. Um, you know those stories. You know, made Metal Gear Solid one through four what they are today, and why we love them so much because they are they go they're, above and beyond. Yeah, and they're not for everyone. Oh, they shouldn't be. No. Making when you make a game for everyone, you end up pleasing nobody. Um, yeah, you you're partially pleasing everyone. You're not. It's better to please the group of people that are follow yeah. it, I think. Especially the hardcore fans. Yes. Um, Cutscenes are largely gone. Um, yes, instead of one linear style of gameplay and like a linear story like we've seen before, it's broken up into missions. You select a mission and then you go. And you only get a cutscene afterwards. And it's it doesn't. like Peace Walker. But, um, I'm sorry. No, I I mean, like, like Peace Walker, I'm fine with it the way it happened because it kind of was, like, off to the side. So you you can get a little bit more liberal in how you do the game. Um, For for this one um, in the storyline circle, this follows three, which I think is the best one in the series. By far. Yeah. Um, you know, like, I miss the story. And sometimes, like, if I don't pick it up for a day or so, or if you do side missions, which in most every case won't advance the storyline, you forget what's going on. Um, now, Konami did put a lot of stock in... There's cassette tapes that you can listen to. But that's kind of a cop-out. That's a it huge... Can't... It's an excuse to remove large chunks of the story there's a lot of information in the in the tapes you know like you, there's like a menu that you select the tapes and you listen to and like you know they explain a lot of stuff but you're stopping the game and then going off to the side to get gain information that the game used to lay out in obnoxiously long cutscenes which we love 
Yeah, I personally loved the cutscenes. Yeah, they were a bit long, but they were the story. Yeah, I mean, you you didn't get it anywhere else. Um, there was a bit of you know, it was special, and when you picked up a Metal Gear Solid game, you knew what you were going to get, and we love that. It's and gone. Now- it feels like a chore to sit there and listen through the tapes yeah. to try and figure out what's going on because the cutscenes and the whole game is just you go through it and it's like what the fuck is what why are we doing this what the fuck is going on the, exactly <laughs> it, it's like you, you do some missions and a lot of times it feels like you're just doing missions yeah there's no there's no clear point like when you play peace walker you know, ex- or any other Metal Gear Solid game, please. You know exactly why you're doing yeah. what you're doing. And you it's not. Oh, sorry. Um, no, sorry. <laughs> I mean, it, it's not like we're not far enough along in the game because Metal Gear Solid games, even from the beginning, it threw story in your face. I mean, um, you've, you've played further than me. Is it any different? It, it becomes more apparent. That the story was skimped on. Um, it becomes more agitating because, you know, I'm at a point now where it just feels like I'm doing missions. I don't know why I'm doing it. The cutscenes that are there after missions, they kind of feel like they were created because they had to do something. Like, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like Metal Gear Solid's have passed. Um, like it was just slapped onto there. It, yes. Um, so that's our take on the story, but let's talk about the good, because there's a lot of good here, and this Metal Gear Solid kind of feels like the Metal Gear Solid that will help introduce the series to maybe people that were turned off by the -the over-the-top story, and the style of gameplay of sneaking. Um, it's expanded the type of gameplay, you can still sneak through the levels, and you know, be a sneaking badass like Snake is, you can be tactical with the wide array of tools. There are way too many tools, but they're all really cool. I think they're neat. It's awesome. Uh, you can go in Guns Blazing, too, which I will say, this Metal Gear Solid series, like when things hit the fan and there's a huge gun battle, you don't feel completely inept. Um, mm-hmm. Julie, have you gotten into any big gun battles like where shit went hit the fan and i have a couple times mostly i actually like to play it pretty traditionally like to try to sneak through it Mm. if i get caught i i don't (laughs) i can't do that i actually end up restarting a lot just because i don't want to get caught i mean and that's another thing actually to talk about i'm sorry oh no i mean like like the rating system kind of like pushes you to like Oh, like I want to play it really well, but like, what, what, which way is the best way? Which way is going to get me the highest score? I mean, but most of the time, I will end up just, you know, sneaking. Maybe I'll blow something up for a diversion um, to mix it up a little bit. But it's very adaptive to how you want to do the game, which is kind of cool to see. Like, it's, yeah. it's nice to see them try different things. And if you want to try different things, the game doesn't fall apart. I mean, the way I usually do it is I just kind of go through it having fun. Like, mm. if I want to sneak, I'm sneaking, which is usually what I do. Mm. And then maybe later I'll go back and try to get the score, but I don't really care much. It's I, I just want the experience. Yeah, the, sc- the score, like, they, they put a lot of stock in it, but I... It, it just seems like a, it's like it's there, and like, oh, hey, I got an A, whatever. Or sometimes... You'll suck at a mission, and it gives you an A. It's like, why did I get an A? Or, I did really awesome. Why did I get a D? Yeah. It just seems kind of like there to, like, you know... To to mock you. Yeah, give you a pat on the back, or knock you, whatever. Um, The enemies are smarter. Oh, they're... It's much better. There's a lot of improvement with the AI. I mean, I was fine with the AI being kind of derpy. Um... You know, but you can kind of just mechanically go through the game after, like once you know like how they work, you, it's the entire game. It's just yeah, it, it's easy. Yeah, I mean, like um, Metal Gear Solid three and four did a little bit to address it with the um, levels of the alert system and then dragging out the durations longer. But here, enemies are adaptive. Uh, if they see something, they will chase you down. They will team up. 
Um, and that's really cool to see, you know, because it makes it feel a bit more immersive, and it makes it challenging, and the situation constantly changes. Yeah, and they remember it, too. It's not like, oh, the alert's up, I'm going to forget about everything that oh, ever no. happened. Oh, no, they, they remember, I'm, which is good. It, it makes it way more challenging than in the past, but they mixed it up a lot. So, you know, we knock the gaming industry for running back to what it knows and pleasing the fanboys, and sometimes I'm you know, giving the game a hard time for doing a lot of stuff differently, but I'm glad they did. Yeah, no, they they did that beautifully. The AI, are, yeah. it, it's a lot, it's a lot more fun. It's a lot more fun. Um, let's see. I don't really like the whole mother base thing. I don't like it. Mm, I don't care for it. it. I don't see the point. Um, it's, it's based, like for people who, maybe are just getting into it or wondering like what this whole mother base thing is they keep on hearing about when they hear about Metal Gear Solid reviews. It's basically a base building mechanic into the game where you build up your personal army. Um, later on in the game, you can send your army out to do missions and they come bring back resources and money and sometimes they'll bring back more people. It, it, there are some nice things about it eventually it turns into a great source of income and resources for you. You know, when you have other people do the work for you to do like those little piddly missions that it has set out for the, your troops. Um, making your weapons over the course of the game is kind of neat. It gives you an incentive to collect material and recruit soldiers. So at least they give you an incentive to build upon it. But it just, it just feels tacked on. Yeah, I mean, it's nice to be able to actually see your base, but there's no point to it. Not really. I mean, like, they want you to go back. The idea is if your troops see you at your base more, their base stats get increased through a morale system. Yeah. It doesn't do much. You know, you show up, like, once every two or three missions, take a shower, which taking a shower makes a difference in the game. It's like another chore that you kind of just have to do. It's a few chores. I mean, but I, it's there. You have to use it, so you know you make the most of it. But when you make the most of it, it does perform. So I will give it that. Yeah. Um, the open world. Um, again, I loved it at first. It. I like it and hate it. I I like it because the game does feel big. Like it feels big yeah and it's beautiful oh it's beautiful Beautiful world you start cranking up the settings it looks amazing i like sometimes i feel like missions are made on too large of a scale for the style of gameplay of like you know selecting a mission then going out it's kind of like assassin's creed like every mission you have to run off the top of the goddamn mountain every goddamn time they got way too old, way too fast. This kind of feels like the same thing. Um, it, it gets a little monotonous. To it does. Get in the helicopter, go to the next location, then travel to it. It it really breaks it up. Um, you know, along with the lack of story, it really takes you out. Yeah. And of, with the auto save feature. Oh, the auto save! <laughs> there is no more Kodak, um, as we know it. There is no Naomi. There is no paramedic. The game saves for you. And it fucking sucks. Yes. Like this is like it seems like this is the very first time Konami has tried an autosave feature in the game in any kind of game they've made, which is not true, but it seems like it. It saves at the worst times. It doesn't save in locations that we're traditionally used to in action adventure games where it's kind of like the old games, like where like if you we're doing like this one section of the game. You knew that even if you saved, you would be mm. starting it over if you turned that game off. Yeah, yeah. it's that exact feeling. Uh, yeah, and it's and again, it's another thing that kind of like takes you out. You know, you don't feel like you're in control. You know, like sometimes you're like, I just don't want to complete this mission. I'll get like to a point and save. And instead of like calling up Naomi and being like, Hey, I need to save. No, I haven't seen that movie. I never see movies, Naomi, or like, you know, whatever cut scene there is there, interaction with the other characters. You have to wait, and wait, and wait for a cut scene, and then you're caught in the middle of action, 
And then all of a sudden, up in the upper right-hand corner, you see checkpoint. Yeah, or you just got you just gotta keep going through the whole thing, finish it up, or, or yeah, you, just, or you just do the whole mission, accept, accept and you waste another half it. hour, yeah. and then and then you're rushing through it, which again makes you feel like or, you're just running yeah. through missions. And I mean, with the way I play it, I mean, I told you I restart it several times just yeah. because I get caught sometimes because I'm trying to sneak through it yeah. and I'm trying to find the easiest path, yeah. and or I just mess up. Yeah. Um, it, and then you're spending a lot of time on a mission that may not be very important to the grand scheme of the game itself, but you don't know that. You're hoping for any kind of story. And then there are some things that like really add on to our gripes as big fans. Um, I cannot figure out how IGN justified the 10 out of 10. Um, you know, IGN, no. one of the biggest gaming publications out there. Um, it's on not day, 10 out of 10. Yeah, on day one, they're like, Metal Gear Solid, 10 out of 10. And, like, I watched the review. I'm like, oh, dude, awesome. You know, and, like, I had the game on my computer ready to play on day one. But after playing the game for a few days, you know, IGN's, like, had to send out a video justifying their 10 out of 10, which I thought was weird. And I watched that. And I'm like, okay, you know, there's some, like, good reasons. But after playing the game, like, I don't think IGN – IGN jumped the gun. Yeah, they, they did. It was Metal Gear Solid game 10 out of 10. It's awesome. I mean, which – I'm all for that idea. Yeah, I mean, all I love for that the idea. series. And, like, I saw that and, you know, the, the fanboy in me jumped up and down. Like, totally yeah. get that. But, you know, IGN, I'm sure to make a deadline, ran through the game. Just ran through the story. Um, I'm sure if you marathon the game 40, 50 hours and just play the main quest, well, main missions, and you get the story in a you know, much more compact um, time period than most people actually will get that story, maybe it doesn't seem quite as broken as it does if you like play bits and pieces and put it down because you have a nah. life. Nah. But I, 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 I don't – like the little things really add up to like – it's not a 10 out of 10 game, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, Me- I Metal- mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. Metal Gear Solid doesn't need to be a 10 out of 10 game. It's its own thing. It's not supposed to be for everyone. Um, Metal Gear Solid 3, I think... Um, I think it was Game Informer back in 04, 03 or 04. They're like 8 out of 10, you know. And now we're looking back at that one and being like, that was one of the best games of all time. So yeah. Let's see, what else? Um, oh, yeah, the voices. Um, David Hayter, where'd you go? Where'd you, where'd you go, David Hayter? Like, that was Snake. That's been Snake for the past yeah. 18 years. They suddenly changed it for the last one. To Kiefer and I mean, Sutherland. I have nothing against this new guy. It's fine. It's Kiefer Sutherland. Um, I believe he w- he's the guy from the TV series 24, I think. I wouldn't know. I don't, I don't have cable... N- I don't watch TV. This generation doesn't have cable because it's stupid. Um, I think that's who it is. But anyway, like, the voice is all right. Like, it, it fits that whole 80s thing, but it's not David Hayter. No, it's not. Um, you know, the rest of the voice acting, when it does come in, though, it is good. Yeah. Um, I mean... Yeah, whenever, it's, whenever it actually comes in. Yeah, whenever you actually hear... Something going yeah. on. Um, it's great to see that the original voice of Otacon came back to voice Otacon's dad. Like that. Yeah, no, that's hilarious. Yeah, that's uh, the... yeah like, like that's the highlight, hearing Otacon's voice again. Um, and it's kind of it's kind of interesting working with Ocelot, you know. Interesting, like in the 60s you were shooting at each other, in the 80s you worked together. Yeah. And then in 1998... Ocelot's shooting a clone of you. But, you know, that's Hideo Kojima logic. And I'm okay with that. It's okay, I'm still kind of going, what the hell is going on with that and everything? <laughs> uh, it, it may explain it eventually, but, you know, at this point, anything that's familiar, I will hang on to it. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not complaining, I'm just, like, a little bit, like, confused. There's enough confusing about the game. I mean, and like, 
yes, I'll still play the game and I'll still love it, but there's enough of that what's going on um, that comes up in your mind enough to say this, you know, I like it. I might actually say I love it some days, but this isn't what I had in mind. Like, I appreciate them innovating and going in a different direction, but... Uh, some of it was not done right at all. Yeah, I... Some of this may be because Hideo Kojima and Konami were on the outs. That's what I was thinking when I originally started seeing, like, these cutscenes. Or the lack of. Yeah. Um, you know... The period between four and five, um, eight years, I believe, eight and a half years, um, for the Metal Gear Solid series, that is a lifetime of waiting between games. You know, there's a lot that we may not know. There's a lot we may not never know that happened behind the scenes. Maybe that had something to do with it. Um, don't want to sit here and rag on the game and then hear about, you know, the, the game barely came to, came out. You know, a lot of work went into the game, and we applaud. Konami and um, Kojima and his team finishing it, putting, getting it together. Um, because PT didn't make it. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, you know, the whole that the latest Son of Hill has kind of died forever. That's dead. So at least we got Gosh. this. Such um, a shame. That is a shame. Um, I think it it. You know, that looked like he was going in a good good direction. Um, you know, Kojima carried Konami. They did. Um, you know, he started out as a code monkey, and he bullshitted his way to the top. That's why he's <laughs> one of gaming's greatest success stories. The best way to bullshit. Yeah, he li- he lied his way to the, the top. The best way to get to the top. Yeah, and then and Metal Gear Solid One just happened to be a blockbuster. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Um. But like I said, um, you know, this is still one of the most famous gaming series of all time. Five does not take away from it. Um, it's better than four, but you know, it is what it is. You're still I don't think Snake. I've never actually seen much of four. I wanted to play that. I I did not have a PS3. I've seen a lot of gameplay. Um, it seemed like a quick turnaround after three to get on the PS3. I've actually avoided watching gameplay of it because I'm just so frustrated that I've never gotten to try it because it's kind of like I don't want to spoil yeah. it for myself, but I want to play it. The story was good. Um, it just seemed like they didn't add much after three as far as actually gameplay and like you know what you were doing in the game. Mm. But I... <sighs> I sound disappointed, but I'm really not. Um, it's just we hear conflicting things about this game, and that's why we thought it was high time to sit down and be like, here's what's up from fans who like are living with the game in the real world. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's a little bit disappointing. We've had bigger disappointments. Yeah. Um, cough, Cough, Halo 4, Cough, Cough, Destiny. Um, you you want to add anything for this year? That was a big disappointment for you? Bigger disappointment? No, I'm just like, I'm caught on Destiny. That, what the hell was that? And, and like, every single attempt to fix it afterwards. <laughs> so, n- no matter what, better story than Destiny. So, um, so we both Destiny agree. Destiny has a story. <laughs> there is a story somewhere, I've been told. <laughs> I've been told there's a story somewhere. I know nothing about that game. I've... I put in 80 hours of gameplay on my old 360, and there wasn't a story there. It just... $600 million, I don't know where it went to. Um, but we both agree that Metal Gear Solid Five is not the 10 out of 10 that we were told. Um, we're hoping for. Yeah, I mean... Um, so I, I guess we need a Cogwork Gaming adjusted score. Um... So, Julie, out of 10, what would you give Metal Gear Solid Five based off of your experience living with the game in the real world? I would say maybe it's a little bit harsh. Maybe like a 7 or 8 out of 10 just because the story and the autosave feature drive me nuts. That, that big? 
that big of a deal breaker. I mean, the story isn't so much... I, I don't know. Sometimes I'm really frustrated because it's the gameplay is amazing. The gameplay makes yeah. up the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But the you, you don't know why you're doing anything. Mm. It, it becomes... The gameplay becomes pointless when the, the mission becomes pointless. A lot of meaning is taking, taken away from the Metal Gear Solid game when the story is skimped so much. If it was any other video game series, I think we'd be giving it a soft pass. Yeah, I, I would let it slide. Yeah. Um, the lack of story, again, a, a, a deal breaker for me because Metal Gear Solid 1 is the game that put me where I'm at today as a video gamer. Um, you know, I love everything else. I love how they expanded the game to introduce so many different gameplay mechanics and concepts, but that story is a huge disappointment. Um, I'm going to say 8 out of 10. Um, that sounds about, about right. Yeah, um, so, we, so can we say 8 out of 10 for the Cogwork Gaming adjusted score? Yeah, I can agree to that. Yeah, I mean, you know, and if you haven't bought Metal Gear Solid Five yet, like if you're waiting for a sale, good for you. Um, yeah, it's. It, I mean, yeah. if you if you haven't bought the game by now, you're not a hardcore fan. You're waiting to see if this Metal Gear Solid is the one that you pick up and try and get into the series. This is the one that I would recommend as being the easiest to approach if you're not big into the um, obnoxious storytelling. Um, but I would still recommend three. Three is the pinnacle. Yes, I have to agree with that. Yeah. But but if, but but if you want a visually stunning experience, and if you want a gaming experience that can adapt to whatever gaming style that you're doing or your mood for the day, this it's a good one. Um, yeah. So, I mean. um, any closing thoughts? I don't know, I'm just thinking, uh, when I first got the uh, game, Metal Gear Solid Five, I was actually, at the same time, I was paying for a Metal Gear Solid 1, because I, I always wanted to play it, and I've seen all the gameplay, mm -hmm. and now all I can think is after experiencing 5, I, I'd rather pick up, wish I had picked up 1 first. Uh, yeah. I wanted, I, I've, you know, I've picked up 1, and, you know, I, and it just... It felt right. I've um, never played it, but it's actually that one is my favorite. I think so far. One is that one. You know, that that one's going to be in glass cases one day, in like yeah. gaming museums. You know, and it, it's hard to follow up. You know, one, two, and three, but it's still Metal Gear Solid. So, if you're on the fence about Metal Gear Solid, waiting for a sale. Um, don't let, um, our, you know, negative, nitpicking. yeah, and, and like some people may see it as nitpicking. Um, we're hardcore fans of Metal Gear Solid. That's why we're kind of busting its balls a bit, but you know, if you're on the fence and you, you want a, you know, great action adventure experience and you're not crazy on obnoxious stories, this is a good game to introduce people. Who yeah, would, and if you're not good at sneaking... You don't have to be. Yeah. If, if you want to blow shit up, you want to go in there guns blazing, yelling Rambo and Murica, you can, <laughs> do, you, you can do that too. So, so Metal Gear Solid, you know, if you're wanting to pick it up this holiday season, I'm sure Steam will have a sale for the holidays in December. If the game's on sale, pick it up then and have a lot of fun. Enjoy it. Um, the pros still outweigh the cons, so... Yeah, the gameplay is... It's definitely worth the gameplay. I'm having a lot of fun with it whenever I pick it up. And, you know, I'm going to pick, pick it up again tonight, and I'm going to play through a mission, and I'm sure I'm going to restart it four times and curse it and be like, why did I give it 8 out of 10? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but still, but, 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 when you, but when you're in the zone with Metal Gear Solid Five, it's it's a good feeling. Take away the autosave feature, and it's yeah. it's it's worth the eight out of ten. Dear Konami, if anyone's still working in your office, give us back Naomi, please. Or just a save button that saves anywhere. Anywhere. 
Maybe. Fingers Maybe. crossed. Well, there you have it. Um, Metal Gear Solid Five. Um, Cogwork Gaming gives it an adjusted score of eight out of ten. Um, the lack of story and other cons that ha- that deviate from the series don't outweigh all the goods. So pick it up on sale. Uh, yeah, on sale. On don't sale. Pay, don't pay the full price for it. No, no. But if you're a fanboy and did, you know, whatever, you know, Metal Gear Solid, Solid Snake. Um, so thanks for listening to our extended review. I hope you've enjoyed the gameplay in the background. And yeah, that's that's all we have. Um, for Cogwork Gaming, I'm the Beverly Hillbilly. And I'm Julie from Mali. And thanks so much for watching. Um, if you've just discovered Cogwork Gaming, welcome to Cogwork Gaming. Hit that subscribe button down below. Browse through our ever-expanding video library. Thanks for watching and good night. Bye-bye.